Hey everyone, I want to take a moment to model some uh, graphing of the derivative functions. These are the cards that we used for our exercise uh, on Tuesday. Um, what I'm going to do is look at a few of the functions that were most frequently answered incorrectly, uh, one and seven. And then uh, what I'm actually going to do, even though you guys didn't have to do this, I'm going to go the other direction. I'm going to try it out starting off with the derivative and see if we can derive what the function would have looked like given the derivatives for uh, P and O. So let's give it a try. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is that I'm going to first start off with some very broad thoughts about, about the function itself and, um, and then think about you know, the degree of, of the derivative function or the original function and then look for the maxes and mins, the zeros, and then finally follow up with the, with the, with the slope. And I, I can write out those steps here so we'll start off by looking at the properties of functions. I'll explain more about that here in a second. And then the degree of the functions. And then, then we'll look at the maxes and mins. In other words, the, um, the zeros of the derivative function. So zeros. And then finally, we'll look at the um, uh, like a sine diagram or, or the slope of the function. Okay. So first things first, looking then at number one, the first thing I notice is that there's a bit of a mirroring effect going on. There's a little bit of symmetry. And I can see that very, very clearly that if I look at the origin, I can see that this left branch and this right branch of the polynomial are symmetric about the origin. So if I fold this over on this side, then I can see that the function is symmetrical, which would indicate to us that the derivative function would be symmetrical as well. I mean, like it's going to reach its max and the min. See how the max is reached here at, at negative three and the min is reached at, at three. Well, the way that's going to translate for the derivative is that we're going to see a bit of symmetry going on there as well. There should be zeros at both negative three and three. Uh, see how it's growing very steeply here and growing very steeply here. Well, we should see that reflected in the derivative function, the graph of the derivative function with very positive outputs here and very positive outputs here. So the first thing that we can see here is that the derivative function is going to have symmetry. And we'll take a look at what that symmetry means here in, in a few moments. Um, okay, so the, the, second, the second big idea then is that is the degree of the polynomial. Now, a lot of teachers explain it where the degree of the polynomial is how many times the, uh, the function changes direction. And that's right to, a, to an extent. Um, what, it really, what, what we really need to be looking at here is at the zeros, at the zeros, what kind of function models these moments, like a best approximates the zero, what the function is doing at that zero. So you can see here when the function at negative four, there's a zero at negative four for the function. And we can see that as it crosses uh, negative four, the x-axis, the function's a straight line, which tells us that that root is going to be linear, or that piece, that zero is going to be a linear, a linear root. Here at this x-intercept at this root, we can kind of see it's got this bendy, curvy, oh, I don't know, um, cubic thing going on where it kind of comes down and bends. It's not a qu quadratic. It's not a linear. It's kind of like a, this cubic motion. Um, and so we know that this next zero, the zero that, that exists uh, at zero when x is equal to zero is going to be cubic. And then finally, for this last x-intercept, we notice that that it's a straight line. It go it goes straight up. So that piece right there is going to be a linear piece as well. And if I had to guess at what this function is going to look like, it's it, or what the formula for the function is going to be, it's going to be something like um, x plus four. There's that negative four root um, times x cubed, or x plus zero. And there's that there's that x intercept um, times x minus four. And there's that root at, at four, and, and it's a linear root. So let's add this up, one plus three plus one. When we multiply these all out, we're going to have an x to the fifth function. 
meaning that our derivative is going to be an x to the fourth function. And so that's really what we should be looking at here, x to the fourth function with the end behavior up and uh, four, four roots, whether they be linear, quadratic, or, or cubic roots, uh, double roots, triple roots, whatever. Okay, I think we're ready then to start in looking at the, the maxes, the mins, and the zeros now that we have a good idea of what the, the, the derivative function should look like. Um, okay, so let's notice then that we have some zeros going on here. We have a, we have a max. Let's see, we have a max at three. We have a max at three. And everything to the left of three is increasing. Then we can see that we have another, uh, what, what we call a saddle point, it's kind of like a stalling point. It's a point where the tangent line to the function is zero. So that's gonna be another root for our derivative function. It's called a saddle point. It's kind of like this, uh, this is like stalling point, um, a stationary point. And we notice that that's at zero. And so we can notice that everything to the left between negative three and zero is negative. And then we can see at three, we reach a minimum. So everything between zero and three is decreasing. So we we'll have a bunch of negatives going on here for the derivative function. And everything to the right of three is increasing. All right, so then we can get to sketch this out, see what this is gonna look like. We know that all of the outputs, since the slope of the tangent line to the left of negative three is positive for the original function, we know all the outputs for the derivative function will be three. So our function is gonna be coming down from the positive space and it's, there's going to be a root at negative three because the slope of the tangent line is zero at that point. So we're gonna be coming down something like this. And then we notice that we're here in negative territory. So it's gonna come down here in negative territory. But then you can kind of see from the slope, it's very steep negative, but then it becomes slightly less negative. See how it's becoming less and less steep? It's gonna become less and less steep and so a slightly less negative number and it's going to hit this zero right at zero. And then we notice that the slopes continue to be negative. Again, it probably reaches its maximum steepness right around at that x point. So we're coming down and reaching its maximum steepness negative right around to that point before it curves back up. It gets less and less negatively steep, less and less negatively steep, less and less negatively steep until it hits three, at which point the output is going to be zero. The slope of the tangent line is gonna be zero at that point. And everything to the right, the slope is positive. So all my outputs at that point would have to be positive. So our function should look something like this. Uh, it, it might not be perfect, it might not be precise, but this is pretty much what we can expect given, given, the, given the analysis that we've done up until this point. Um, we noticed that indeed there's symmetry, like we, we thought there would be. And we in, indeed, uh, this is a quartic function, because it changes direction order three times, one, two, three, four. Uh, one linear root, a double root, and then a linear root, so add that up, one plus two is three, plus one is four, so quartic function, everything looks good. Let's take a look here, what, what did this end up being? Yeah, not bad, we didn't go as far down as we, as we needed to in, in, one, in some points, and what we needed to have done there is, is just simply uh, uh, calculate the slope uh, of the original function at that point in order to know how far down we can go, but that, that's really the best we could have done there. Uh, since these videos, since I'm realizing these videos are going to be kind of long, I'm going to stop now with this one and I'll have part one, two, three, and four of this problem.